Sadashiva Samarambam Shankara Sharyamadhyamam Asmada Sharya Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Ishvaro Gurat Meti Moti Veda Vibhagene Vyomagda Vyapta Dehaya Dakshnamurtaye Namaha Sava Vedanta Sedanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sachi Guru Pranatoshmaham Oh Om Shanti Shanti Shantiao Namaste Welcome Ripura uh, Rahasya a verse 7176, chapter 13, we stopped there last week. Dream and awakefulness resemble each other in their discontinuous harmony, like a chain made up of links. So it says that dream and awakefulness seems uh, they 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 almost like resemble each other in their appearance discontinuity but he says discontinuous harmony okay like a chain made up of links but there is no unbroken continuity in any object because every appearance implies a later disappearance so that's the nature of mitya everything apparently seemingly appears but only to disappear to reappear again and again. And uh, <clears throat> so are they uh, continuous? Yes, they are, but they appear to be discontinuous because uh, they go from the physical material and then they go back to the mental and then they, they disappear in the causal and then again, they come back again and again in a cyclical manner as we know. So, their continuity cannot be denied in the fundamentals underlying the object. The fundamentals are the macrocosm causal body in which everything does exist, sometimes manifest, other times unmanifest. Because the dream creation is obliterated and hindered, rendered false by in the, at this present uh, awake experience, what distinction will you draw between the fundamentals underlying both worlds, the dream world and the physical world with physical objects? It appears that one cancels the other and one proves the other to be unreal, although we tend to say, no, when I change from the dream state to my awake, awake state, I realize that now I am in reality, back to reality. That was just a dream. Yeah? That was unreal. Yeah? But here we are looking, uh, we are challenging that uh, assumption and uh, understanding that all these states, they occur within the mind, uh, depending on, a, on certain states. Yeah? And they are projections or reflections, all, uh, all happening in consciousness. And uh, there is no really distinction when we look at the underlying fundamentals of all objects. Yeah? They, are, they are not real now and false in the dream state. They are as false now as in the dream state. Or better said, they are apparent reality, you know, either yeah? in both states. So they are objective, apparent realities. The object does exist, and but as meteor. Yeah? And then uh, <clears throat> there is no distinction between these two worlds, these two objects, the mental and the physical. If you say that the dream is an illusion and its fundamentals are equally illusion, so you say that in the dream, uh, the objects, they, they are so subtle and they are uh, insubstantial, they are not tangible, they come and go, they disappear very fast. And uh, there is no structure of time and space there. 
So it seems that goes through years in a few seconds or minutes. So it is it it does not it does not seem to be real. No? If you say that is an illusion, and it's fundamentals are equally an illusion because there is the point here is that everything that appears in the waking state, it's uh, it's appearing from a, a ground of uh, existence which is manifest as the macrocosm called your body. So appears that there is this continuity between objects that appear and then stay for some time, changing from moment to moment to be destroyed in the next moment. So, but the fundamentals are that they remain, they remain from the potential seed formation to the manifest formation going back again and again. That is the game. And here say, if you say that in the dream is different because there is no fun, fundamental ground, you know? So uh, you, are, you are wrong because there is a fundamental ground there as well on which those objects cyclically appear. So how about some one of us, I, I, I have had some of those uh, dreams, dreams that somehow repeat themselves over years and decades. No? I had some, I had some dreams that kept, 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 kept coming, coming back, coming back, coming back. And some of them I was like, wow, how come it's still popping up, yeah? appearing, those events, those things, you know, those objects. So there is a, a, a fundamental ground, okay? This, uh, the creation of the dream world comes from the same fundamental ground, which is a, a, a certain reflector uh, called the, the mind of Jivachima in the dream state. So otherwise, if you, if you insist to say that there is no fundamentals in the dream, in the, in the appearance of the object, I will ask you and then tell me, explain me what is an illusion. It is determined by the transitory nature, which is nothing by appearance to and disappearance from our sense. Now, now the author here, the sage, start linking it to the sense organs. Everything is happening in our sense organs. There are reflections occurring in the in the mind through the five senses. So we have seen several examples that we, we do not see the same world and we furthermore, we don't experience the same world because uh, sense organs, they are a little bit different and the mind interpreting those sense perceptions uh, also different, you know, different set of vasanas and so on. So the world is, uh, is a transitory of transitory nature which is nothing by appearance to and disappearance from our sense, our mind. It's appearing and disappearing within our mind. So where is the world, you know? We, we probably know, you, you guys know the teaching of location of the objects, okay? So it happens where? Well, it does not happen anywhere, but we see the screen of the human mind, okay? And then we have to determine what is the, the distance or the difference between the mind and consciousness, okay? So it's appearing in the mind, no? and the mind is the only instrument for knowing and experiencing this world. And then the fundamental question is, is the mind apart from consciousness or is the mind like everything else contained in consciousness and everything is contained in consciousness as consciousness? So when we, when we collapse or resolve the mind in consciousness, and then we understand that everything is but appearance and disappearance uh, uh, occurring in consciousness through the human mind. Which break, breaking down, it goes back to the sense and then all those uh, examples to prove that uh, different living beings, different jivas, uh, animals, are going to perceive uh, the world differently to the extent that uh, even our, one of the most fundamental analogies of Vedanta, which is the light, that light is what reveals objects, cannot be an absolute truth. 
it is it, it is related linking to the the sense organs but not all sense organs are the same and then we know that there are certain birds that are blinded by the sun during the day and they can only see in darkness and then you go like you scratch your head and say oh my god so you know it's uh, what is real here you know not even the famous light example as the power that illumines and reveals reality to us not even the light can be taken as ultimate reality you don't know it's just because it depends on the sense organs the sense, sense instrument depend on the instruments that are going to experience light to some jivas light is going to reveal to other jivas life light is going to conceal the appearance of this world i mean this is really intriguing isn't it Lynn? totally huh? This is one of the most mind blowing yeah. uh, of the of the teaching in in terms of the way it affects your day to day and how you see the world. It's just bonkers. <laughs> the data is so counter counterintuitive. It's unbelievable, you know. It's unbelievable. It, it destroys. It, it's the ultimate uh, red pill. Let's say, you know. Nowadays we talk a lot about red pills and blue pills. So I don't know. Huh? What are red pills? Huh? From, what are red? From from the the movie Matrix. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, yeah. Really. So Vedanta yeah. is so counterintuitive. They say, no, no, Jesus. I mean, this is the ultimate red pill. I want to see reality, and I need to go into all these concepts of Vedanta. That uh, you know, they they are out there. You know, absurd. I mean, I can't believe it, you know. So there are two things in, in self-knowledge. One is to, to recognize that uh, my true nature is identity, that's slash identity, is consciousness, okay? And then the other one, which is a big one, is to acknowledge what the Upanishad says when they say that this world is not real. You understand? <laughs> One thing yeah. is, that I am consciousness, and I understood, and I am not the body, and then my fears and, and concerns are uh, mostly gone. But then you have to deal with the fact that the world continues, continue, uh, continue to appear, continues to appear. And I need to, to, to keep remembering the teachings that, okay, I'm not going to be fooled by Maya because this world is not real, okay? It's not, it's it's more than to say that this world is does not contain happiness and 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 peace and satisfaction and completion. You know that it has no value, anything is just matter, the element. It's more than that. It's it's to the point through the certain Upanishads that determine that it's non-existent. That's not real, you know. So Jesus, this is the ultimate red pill, let's say. That's great. <laughs> the dream creation is destroyed and rendered false by your awake experience. What distinction will you draw between the fundamentals underlying the dream object and the physical material object? If you say that dream is an illusion and its fundamentals are equally illusion, whereas the present physical material creation is not so, and is not so destroyed, and its fundamental must therefore be true. You know? It's the same concept that the present physical material is not like the dream world, the dream objects that come and go, and this one is permanent and solid. It's not destroyed as I, I change my, my mental state. Therefore, the fundamentals here are true, but the fundamentals, okay, the, the place from which the objects come and resolve back into the fundamentals here, uh, uh, we can say that, uh, that are real, okay, are true. But in the dream state, no, you know, because those objects are just dreams. I ask, you what the illusion is. So we have seen that before. 
It's appearing and disappearing from your sense. Is not everything destroyed in deep sleep? If you maintain, however, oh, Mark, Mark appeared here. If you say uh, it's not everything obliterated in deep sleep, if you maintain, however, that mutual contradiction is unreliable as evidence and so proves nothing, it amounts to saying that self evidence vision alone furnish the best proof. So this is the argument here. Everything is destroyed, disappears in deep sleep. If you maintain, however, that mutual contradiction, because the deep sleep is destroyed as well in the, in the, in the dream state, and then the dream state as well is destroyed in the wake state. Okay, but if you maintain, however, that these contradictions, the mutual you know, contradictions, is not a proof or evidence of the real nature of the three world, the three you know, states, and so on, it amounts to saying that you only believe in in insight, in self-evident sight. So, and then you believe only in what you can feel, smell, taste in the awakened state, because even in the dream state, you may have sights and smell and other uh, sense organs operate. So say, no, okay, no, I only believe in the sensory experience. And, uh, and then I say, reality is what can be accessed by the five sense. So quite, so people like you do not have a true or deep insight into the nature of things. So therefore take my word for it. That's a big one. Uh, who is going to take such a word for it unless you are intellectually uh, uh, convinced. Huh? Therefore, take my word for it. The present world is only similar to the dream world. The same thing, images appearing in the mind. Long periods pass in dreams as well. So in dreams as well, you can, you can have a sense of time that and duration, you know? So in the dream, you're going to have a sense of duration and in the wake state, the same way. Therefore, purposefulness and enduring nature are in every way similar in both states. So in both states, you're going to have a sense of time, you're going to have a sense of space, and you're going to have a sense of purpose, okay? Because as we know, so a cup in the dream states serves the purpose of uh, a, a dreamer, you know, who is searched for water. Just as you are oblivious, aware in your waking state, so also you are in your dream state. Sorry, it's not oblivious, obviously. So we are awake. This is a, a this is the most simple and uh, clear point for us to take from all this analysis, you know, just as you are obviously aware in your waking state. So I have had a dream. So, and then I was there, you know, sometimes I was seeing my dreamer as an object. Sometimes I was identified with the dream and I was at the subject experience of the dream. And then therefore I woke up, uh, uh, very much freaked out, you know, and emotionally disturbed because it was a bad dream, you know. So, either way, so in the waking state, uh, we have an experience, and then in that experience, uh, I have been running for, or running against, or enjoying or suffering, and then I come to the awake state, and it's the same thing, the same game. I'm either enjoying or suffering, uh, reaching for, or moving away from. So, and uh, in both cases, there is something that is aware of the experiencer, the experience, and the experienced. So, just as you obviously are aware in your waking state, the same you are aware in your dream state. Does anybody have any Difficult to understand this obvious fact. Well, I was there, 
How you were there as consciousness, of course, I was aware in the awake state and I was aware in the dream state. These two states being so similar, why do you not mourn to the loss of your relatives in your dream state? So you dream you had an accident and then you lost everybody, your entire family. And then you, you suffer a little bit while the dream was there and then thanks God I wake up and then I am, I am released because it was a dream. But both experiences are similar, they are happening in consciousness. And if I take myself to be consciousness from the standpoint of consciousness, I'm witnessing the, those two experiencing entities, the awaker and the dreamer, experience pleasure and pain. Yeah? So if you want to be the agent, and then it's okay, you're gonna suffer the loss of your relation. But if you understand that uh, this physical world is as unreal as the dream world, and if you take a stand in consciousness, you know, and then you will see that any loss you have in the awakened state, as well in the dream state does not affect you because you are aware of the gain and the loss. No? So you are free from both. So, and uh, we are making these parallels to understand both uh, realities, apparent realities as equally false in a way that uh, it does not affect what we are, awareness, consciousness, and why you are crying for losing all your relatives now. No? So the awakeful universe appears to be real only by the force of habit. I love this one. No? The awakened state is sustained by all human living creatures, you know, uh, uh, you know, reinforcing the sense of reality, something which is just a reflection in consciousness. So, but we attribute reality to all of that. And then we do attribute so much reality that we attribute value on the objects reflected in consciousness. And then we keep asking Shwara, please send us more, sustain it, don't destroy it, don't take Pralaya. Please, Shwara, don't bring Pralaya in my lifetime. Okay? It is not fair. So I love the game of sustaining this universe you know, help you, provide you with my likes and dislikes, yeah? my rugged, rugged version, and everybody doing that collectively creates a, a, a momentum, a force, you know, which is a vasana force, force of habit, you know, that somehow sustains the universe. That's why we need to understand that Ishwara does not sustain the universe alone as uh, Vishwa as a, a Brahma, Vishnu, Vishnu and, and, uh, and Shiva. Yeah? So Ishwara uh, does not sustain this universe alone as Vishnu because this is a joint venture. The, the human beings have to attribute reality and repeatedly hold it in place so that Ishwara can hold this picture. And then we all fall for it and we say, yeah, it's real. And God is doing that for us. Oh, we are doing it together. Huh? Force of habit. If the same be imagined empty and useless, it will disappear into emptiness. If you imagine the world is just nothing, it's just a reflection. If everybody would come to that understanding, if everybody would come to understand, I am consciousness and this light of consciousness is the only reality and the world is unreal. Imagine everybody having this realization and then where does this universe would go? I mean, it would disappear never to come back because uh, you know that's why it will never happen that everybody gets self-knowledge and understands simultaneously at the same time because somebody has to hold this ignorance in place. You understand? We have to hold Avidya and, and Maya and this power to delude everybody in place. 
if we go against Avidya, and then game is over and the universe is over. One starts imagining something, then contemplates it over and over again. And by continuous or repeated association with those imaginary delusional belief that objects are real and they and they contain a certain uh, value in making you happy by continuous repeating and maintaining this association you end up believing that that's true so we all know that a lie in the political uh, environments you know everybody knows that you repeat a lie over and over again, and then it becomes true. And we know it in every circle, you know? And we learn many lies that became true for, for us because of repetitions. So if you continue to repeat uh, that it is true, you know, you're going to hold it in place. But it begins with some imagination, a desire, a slight desire, that the world is real and I want it. In that way, the world appears real in the manner one is used to it. If you see the word, the whole thing about uh, uh, Videha Mukta or Jivan Mukta and Videha Mukta. Videha Mukta is the status of someone who, who leaves the body and somehow does not have any and let's say enough ignorance to hold again a certain desire load to bring to, to bring it back to this world in which he's deluded to go and chase objects again. The, the world appears real in the manner uh, you are used to it. If you believe that it's real, it's beautiful, and I want more and more, and you die with that, and then what happened? you're gonna get more of the same delusion. Yeah? But if you leave this body, knowing that this is just a play, it's just a delusion, just a projection or a reflection however, and then it does not contain any reality and much less it does not contain happiness and fullness and so on, because you are the only source of security and completion and satisfaction and peace. Yeah? And then uh, how are you going to manifest another birth? Huh? How are we going to manifest that? Oh, no, Ishwara, I can send you back as an avatar. Said, okay, so we are not going to fight with the boss. Huh? If the boss wants to send Philippe back as an avatar, so you are not going to challenge your boss, right, Philippe? And then he says, in that way, the world appears real in the manner of your habits, the way you, you relate to it. My world that you visit together with me inside of the hills, uh, it's going to prove my point here. Come now, let's go around the hill and see. My universe is inside that hill. And then he took the, the king, the son of the king, to take a, 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 a round like we do in Arunachala. Now you take a round. And then uh, after some time, they return to the former initial spot. Then he said, look, King, the circuit of the hill is hardly two miles and a half. And yet you have seen a universe within it. How can it be real? Is it real or is it false? The entire universe in such a small piece of land and say, it is a dream or it is a reality. What has passed as a day inside of that hill has count for 12,000 years here outside of the hill. Which, which sense of time, measurement of time, which one of those two is the correct sense of time and space? Think and tell me which one of the two is real. Obviously, you cannot distinguish this from a dream. So this word create inside, inside of the hill is not different from a dream and cannot help concluding 
the, the world, the physical, is nothing but another sort of a dream held together by our delusion that this dream is real and the dream you experience in the middle of the night is not real. My world, the sage say, the son of the sage, my world will disappear instant, instantly if I cease to hold it. But he's a yog. He has such a, a focus and power to hold thought in a way that he creates this subtle universe apparently within the hill in which he is a king. He wants to be a king. He was the son of a king. The king renounced the kingdom and became a sannyasi, became a sage. And he said, oh, oh but I want to experience. And now I'm becoming a sage with you, dad, but I want to be a king as well. I said, doesn't matter, no problem. You don't need to go through everything I went, new births. I'm going to teach you yoga and then you create another illusion, delusion, and then you're going to be a king. We see the delusion. The kingdom that I had before it was again another delusion. Therefore, if I cease to contemplate it, my universe disappears, my kingdom within the hill disappears. Therefore, convince yourself of the dreamlike nature of this world and do not indulge to believe, indulge in grief at your family's disappearance, because 12,000 years have passed, you are not here. You insist to take a look with, inside my universe, and you did not know that time and space were structured differently. And now, don't be a child to say, oh, I lost everything, you know. It was a dream in there, it's a dream in here, okay? Understand, just as the dream creations are pictures moving on the mind, so also this world, including yourself, the one experiencing this world and the world experienced by, the, by this instrument of experience is the observe of the picture this depicted, depicted by pure intelligence. And it is nothing more than an image in the mirror of consciousness. So we have no difficulty to understand that uh, the dream is not apart from our mind, yeah? because uh, we experience it alone. So if we would go into a dream, and then in the dream we would find uh, a million people or a hundred thousand people dreaming the same dream, okay, and then uh, you would say, okay, no. I mean, that there is a sense of reality in that dream because I, I was not dreaming it alone. There were a lot of people dreaming it together. So there is some, some substance to that. But we know that a dream is uni, unique to the dreamer. We have no difficulty to understand that the, the, the dream world we experience is just uh, happening in our mind. Something, a reflection, or, you know, a projection by, by the power of my vasanas, my likes and dislikes, desires and fears, and so on. Yeah? So uh, we know that the dream is just a picture occurring in our own mind on the screen of my, my mind. And I know that the mind, you know, is something more than the mind because now I'm a Vedanti. And uh, I know that the mind does not have consciousness on its own, it relies on consciousness to be a conscious entity, experience entity. Therefore, everything is reflecting in the mind of the mind, which is the screen of consciousness, okay? So this world, which includes yourself, is also a picture occurring in the same consciousness, pure intelligence. Just image in the mirror of consciousness. See how you feel how you will feel after this conviction. See how you're gonna feel. Now, how is gonna be your relationship to the world and the objects after you have understood these teachings, okay? How you're gonna feel, how you're gonna behave, how you interact, are you gonna still again and again be 
pulled by the power of mind, uh, Maya, you know, and behave as everything is real here, including your physical body. No, we are all reflection and image in our inferior nature. But what are you is the fundamental question here. Are you the illuminating consciousness, awareness that is experienced both worlds, the world of dream, the worlds of the awake state? So understand that and see how you're going to experience yourself in the world after this firm, clear conviction. Will you be elated by the accession of uh, dominion or depressed by the deaths of your relatives in your dream? Once you understand that both are like a dream, okay? In the dream, you suffer when you lose your beloved in the dream. But then you know that immediately you wake up because the dream state does not hold strong emotions such as uh, grief and suffering. It's you, you somehow you pop out of that state. So we know that in a dream state, yeah, I'm going to have experience of pleasure and pain and suffering. And I'm going to be even depressed, but immediately I come out and then I say, no, that was a dream because this is the real one. This is reality. I am a reality, the body mind, and I experience this physical material universe as reality. But the fact is that in the dream, you suffer for a short while. And in the awakening state, you are suffering as well when circumstances are unfavorable, like losing your family. In both universe, in both states, you are going to enjoy and suffer. So what is the difference between enjoying and suffer and then enjoy and suffering here? The difference that there I come out very quickly and say, oh, it was an illusion. I'm not going to go to jail because I robbed the, the bank. So thanks God. No? And here I have to be careful. I, I cannot rob the bank because uh, I may go to jail. No? So what is the difference? So both are just a picture, a movie, a film, project, reflect in consciousness. They are images. Once you understand that, how are you going to be deluded by the experience of pleasures and pain and depression of your relatives, which are dying in a dream? Because this is a dream. That is a dream. The, 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 the universe I create in my hill is a dream. Everything that's happening is just like a dream. It's just like a play of the elements uh, of... Uh, infused by the power of Maya, realize that the self is the self-contained mirror projecting, reflecting, manifesting all universe, all objects in this world. The self is pure, unblemished consciousness. And then he says something very nice. He says, be quick, realize it quickly and be happy. Well, so why does it say be quick? Because the mind has a certain tendency to not accepting reality. What is reality? Reality is something that somehow contradicts unreality. But we had taken unreality to be real, and then the mind does not accept reality as presented by our scriptures. And then I say, be quick, don't give time to the mind to contradict reality because things are reverse, Maya reverse reality for unreality. Understand? So be quick, don't give time to the mind, acknowledge it, realize it, and be free, be happy. Another interesting point in this verse is realize that the self is the self contained mirror projecting and manifesting this world. So as we know, the self is self-contained because it's one without nothing else. And any delusional world can only exist within the self because 
itself is the existence of any and all phenomenon occurring within itself, the only reality. So the self is self-contained because it does not need anything else to reflect this apparent universe, okay? But at the same time, we know that the self cannot do that without the power of Maya. So then we say, we see the self, there is a macrocosmic, mirror-like principle or, or prakriti or, or subtle energies that somehow contains the dream. And the dream is the universe. It's, that's why this association that sometimes Brahman dreams. How does he dream? Because we see himself, which is one without a second, with the one without any inclusion, okay? It's not made out of parts or inclusion. We see himself. There is a certain power to dream. <laughs> and then the universe appears, okay? And appears, why? Because somehow, uh, you know, this power, it activates itself. It is an integral part of Brahman, although Brahman is not made of parts. It is the beginning of the delusion. It's the beginning of the dream, okay? And the self is free from the dream and from delusion, but we see this delusion. This delusion does not go away so easily. And Brahman said, okay, Maya, if you want to keep project this delusion, we see my, my being, you know? Be my guest, huh? play. So it does not affect me. I am self-contained and whatsoever you do, you have to, you know, to deal with the people in this delusion because they are going to be pissed off with you one day. They are going to rebel. And they are going to try to wake up from your dream. And I want to see if they all wake up together, your dream is gonna be gone forever. Huh? Be quickly, realize it. Hello, Mark. Did you wait long in the in the in the waiting room? Hi, Alinda. No, I couldn't connect. Strangely, I couldn't connect to Zoom. It was a very strange situation. Um, but finally I did. Okay. Doc. You have to watch because uh, since I, I I changed to my Zoom now, in some computers, people are having this, this problem here in Brazil because their computers, they have already a vasana to go to the other accounts, Zoom account of Fabio, you know? And then you have to understand that and find a way to trick that vasana. Okay, yeah, that's not happening. Um... But I do have to plug in the number each time now before I could just click on the number. And now yeah. I have to plug in the number and the ID code and everything. Yeah, there are ways, there are ways to make the system understand that 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 other count is, is over. And now your the intelligence of your computer should, you know, to understand that you want to go to the new account, the new Zoom account. It's it should happen. But if you find somebody who is very smart. It could uh, it could uh, make it happen quickly. Maybe Philip could help it sometime. Uh, chapter fourteen: How the universe is just imagination. How to gain that strong will which can create such a world, and how to develop such a strong will for the highest truth. So, if you want willpower. You can use willpower to project realities that are going to give you a lot of uh, experience. You know, because now you are a powerful yogi. And here the title says, how to have that strong mind with such a strong willpower, you know, able to create a world of imagination, a world of your own. But how to gain that strong mind with the power to gain the highest truth. So what is superior there, you know? The will for projecting this private universe 
or the will, the power, the desire to gain self-knowledge. Having heard the sage son, Mahazena began to think clearly and seriously. Now, I thought that he was joking with me and I'm talking about the unreality of this physical material universe. By now, I, I believe sensing that he's serious about that. He's not joking with me. So he, he, he took some time contemplating it. And he concluded that the world is like a dream. And uh, somehow his grief has diminished big time. Okay, so I got it. The world is not, it's like a dream, okay? And uh, no hard feelings about it with Maya and the Shwara. So I got strong, he got strong in his mind. And, uh, and he was in Samad, in a very nice state. But then he still, he was not fully satisfied. He came back and asked again to this for more guidance. He talked to the, the, to the sage, the son of the sage the yogi who create his own universe, he asked him, great and wise sage, you know this world and the worlds beyond this world. I do not believe that there is anything that you do not know. Please answer me now. How can you say that the, the whole, the world is pure imagination? I think it's a, mis a misprint in there. How can you say that the world is pure imagination, right? Oh, I'm not getting it. How can you say that the whole is pure imagination? What do you think? It could be referring to the world. It could be referring to all of this. In other yeah. words, the world. Yeah. yeah. How can you say that everything is pure imagination? All worlds. However, much I may imagine, my imagination does not materialize as the world I would like to live in. Huh? Be the world you want to live in, and I know there is an expression like that, be the world you want to see. Well, so I focus and I live by example, and yet I don't see. My imagination is not materializing the world I would like to see. And it's, it's a very hard task. The avatars come here to try to have a positive impact in the world so that we all can live in a better world, but it's, it's not easy, you know? It's not easy because there is so much deluded, ignorant people sustain a world which is dominated by ignorance and evil. No? However much I may imagine, I don't create my, my, my wished world, but you have created your own universe in the hill and all through the power of your mind. And yet, how do time and space fair in these creations. Now he wants to understand the relationship of time and space and events we see that universe, subtle universe, and this physical material universe. One was created create by us by a, a yogi with certain mental powers, and the other is created here. Who knows by whom? But we understand that it's by Maya Shwara. So how come the time space are so different? So that is his question now. And how come I don't have the power to create my imagined world? John Landon, no. imagine all oh, the people, imagine the world like this and like that, you know? So how come I cannot create my imagined world? And how come the time and space differ in these two creations? Tell me. And then the sage, which is the son of the big sage, or the sage son replied, the will conceives either effectively or ineffectively according to whether it's uniform and unbroken and 
or broken up by indecision. Very nice, very nice. So um, the will is going to conceive reality or, or apparent reality, is going to manifest apparent reality. This will, it can be effective or ineffective according to what? Constancy, okay? Focus, constancy, uniform focus, you know, and holding it. Yeah? But if it is not uniform and constant, it's broken up by indecision. What is indecision? Here we are talking, nobody here wants to, to be a yogi with the power to create my own subtle universe. So the goal here in a Vedantin environment is I want to have the, the power, the strong mind, okay? Effective mind with the qualification the qualities to hold an unbroken flow of uniform concepts delivered to us by the Upanishads, holding it until that vision is clear, undoubtful, undoubtful, and unbroken. So that's our goal. Huh? And then he says, so some are going to be stead, homogeneous, and, and held together without distractions and others are going to be broken up by distraction, distra distraction that he puts as indecision. What is the indecision? I want self-knowledge, but I want so many other things. Huh? I want so many other things. So therefore, I, I, I don't find the willpower, the mental the strength to hold, to bring these strengths into my sadhana and do this nididhyasana, okay, without distractions. And, uh, and other desires popping up and disturbing this unbroken flow of Nididhyasana. Yeah? So it will, it will be effective to some and ineffective to others. It's going to depend on your mind. Do you, do you know this world should be the result of Brahma's desire? Now he presents that this world is a dream produced by Brahma. Do you know that is the result of Brahma's desire? This looks real and permanent because the original desire is so powerful. And again, Brahma does not really desire anything. As we know, Ishwara is, uh, is not, uh, it does not have karma or desires. The desire me, karma means desires. Desires are going to produce comments or so actions with expectations and results of action. So Ishwara is the system. But Ishwara being the system, what it does, it takes on all the desires and aversions, all the raga and aversions by all living creatures, okay? And holds it into the system, sustaining this world. It's like a dream, yes is a result of a desire. So we say Ishwara's desire. No, Ishwara is a facilitator. It does not have desires of its own. It's just see, oh, my, my children. So you have desires, you have fears. Okay, let's form, create, configure a stage on which you can experience objects and transcend this fear and the desire and understand your true nature as the illuminating awareness of, of the whole play. Yeah? So do you know that this word is just Ishwara's desire, which is a desire of the collective humanity? This world looks real and looks continuous and permanent because of the power of this desire. So what is the biggest desire in the mind of every human creature is the desire for experiencing this world. Up to the last breath we are, la we are there, spending all our savings, regardless of leaving anything to children and grandchildren. I spend everything just to have one more day of experience of this physical reality. So there is no desire which is more powerful than the desire for experience. Like one time I told 
Ramji in India, I say, Ramji, I got it. I know what's the most fundamental vasana. It's a vasana for experiencing objects, experiencing duality. The vasana for experience. So we have a powerful mind, but our minds being so powerful is holding our focus on what? Experience, 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 experience. Now imagine yeah, 8 billion people in this planet holding the same power of thought, the power of desire for experiencing the physical material universe. The world is a result of this powerful desire. We say that Ishwara's desire, but Ishwara is just facilitating and producing, providing the collective mind with a stage on which those desires and fears can be exhausted and the jiva can move on. This looks real and permanent because of this powerful desire. Whereas the world of your own creation, no one is going to take seriously and your own mistrust is not going to manifest it. I don't believe I can manifest anything. Good for you. But if you desire to manifest things through the power of one single mind, we'll say that, oh, you better, you know, get many births to develop all these mental powers, become a yogi, and then maybe one day you're going to have a, a powerful mind such as this one. But what for? Huh? Isn't it enough to have the dream world we experience every night and to have this other physical material dream world project by the collective mind of humanity in, in a joint with uh, the facilitator, Ishmael Ishwara, yeah, with the help, with the aid? Isn't it enough? Why do you want to have more experience? Experience is experience, is duality. Is an experience, experience of pleasure and pain. Yeah, well, but I there is one experience that does not bring pleasure and pain. Okay. Yes, deep sleep. Okay. I want to sleep forever and then kill yourself. But you're going to be sent back. It's every every spiritual circle say that's not a good way to go. Okay, and then watch the other way. Maybe Kalpa Samad. Okay, and then I'm going to experience a self-induced state of uh, no experience, okay? No experience, and it feels good because wherever there is an experience of nama rupas, there is disturbance, mental disturbance, emotional disturbance, because you cannot control the field of nama rupas. Ishwara is going to throw to you all kinds of experience and as we know, some are going to be pleasurable and some are going to be unpleasurable. And I'm fed up with these ups and downs. So uh, experiencing two states, experience the deep sleep that says, okay, no, I mean, I like so much this state of no experience, okay? But you don't like that much. Why? Because you keep popping out of it, and some people come to a point they cannot have a deep sleep anymore because they are so hooked up with duality and experience, either the, as a waker or as a dreamer. You understand? Oh, no, I wish I could sleep. And then people go and take sleeping pills, which is a very dangerous yeah, direction to go. So the bottom line is that. Uh, Humanity has this desire for experience. And then we say that Brahman is here to fulfill, Shwar is here to fulfill our desires until we've grown up and we stop playing with toys. No? Whereas the world of your creation is, is powerless and you don't even trust it to begin with. Conceptions materialize for various reasons as follows. And then you say, you can create reality only by virtue of the natural function, as with Ishwara, the creator, this is one. Yeah? So manifestation can come by various other uh, means. Yeah? 
Ishwara, as we know, you know <coughs> Ishwara and Maya, they can create it uh, as a creator by the possession of uh, live gene. Let me see here. By virtue of the natural functions, as with Brahma or Ishwara, as a creator, by the possession of live gems, uh, as with uh, Yakashas, ra uh, ra Rakashasas, uh, celestial beings. So there are all kinds of esoteric things here that uh, they have the power to create all these lockers by the use of herbs and, you know. And the nectar of gods contain superb herbs. The practice of yog yogic development and yogic powers, incantations and seed, seed powers by the force of penance. So all kinds of things can develop maybe a mental condition which allows the virtue of, of bonds as with the octet of the universe. Vishwakarma, oh, that's beautiful. Now it says like, uh, oh, there are different means that uh, people can experience a uh, conception of this universe, okay? Uh, you, you experience them, but you want to project your own. So you have to have a lot of, uh, a very powerful mind, so. Uh, but then it says here, and by virtue of bonds, what is this bonds there? B O O N S. Boons, are like a boons, are like a gift, like good things that okay. that by. Yeah. By virtue of boons, as with the architect of the universe. Who is the architect of the universe? And then it presents Vishwakarma, yeah, which is a very intriguing thing. So who creates all these different universe? The subtle, the physical material one, Vishwa, the awakening, the Jiva, Jiva Atima, the, as the waker, you know, is going to create it by the power of one's karma, okay? So karma, I'm processing my likes and desires, okay? What I want, my likes and dislikes, everything is an opportunity to process vasanas, to process karma. So the architect of the universe as Vishwa, karma, I find it intriguing and uh, he does not, uh, elaborate on this passage here, but it uh, uh, it goes uh, in line with my understanding so far of these aspects of the teaching. Okay, who is the architect of the universe? Is Vishwa, Vishwa's karma, macrocosm karma of the universe? Okay. That's what's going to shape and sustain the universe. Of course, Ishwara is there facilitating. That's why Naranji likes to say the Ishwara is a facilitator. He does not do anything. So we are, we are just like laboring, laboring, yeah? asking, please, let's make, let's keep it. Let's sustain this universe. No, let's say a new political campaign, no to prolong Ishwara, no to prolong. We all want to experience the world forever. Huh? <clears throat> and then here he ends up saying one should forget all the associations in order to make one's new conception effective. So if you want to really manifest your dream, you know, you can, your dream may be uh, wealth, physical uh, wealth, or maybe uh, perfect physical health. The, your dream may be uh, self-knowledge, okay, or yogic powers. But in order for you to manifest, to make your mind strong, to really go and uh, accomplish your dream, you need to abandon certain old associations, old associations and proper association, good association is the base of everything. And you can only have good associations 
to the extent that you abandon bad association or old association. You need to forget the old association, association with people and with thoughts. Which thoughts? Self-limiting thoughts that, oh, you know, I can't, I can't, okay? I can't create my own universe and I can't understand the Upanishads and I can't remove my ignorance. I can't. So I was born ignorant and it is normal to be ignorant. Okay, so we need to abandon association with these limiting thoughts, patterns, you know? In that way, I'm going to develop association with Upanishad thoughts. And then my new desire may manifest effectively. A new conception will be effective to the extent that I hold my intent, I hold my desire for self-knowledge and liberation. Huh? So I'm doing, I'm doing the work and I'm purified if I'm not fully purified and I'm enduring on my nididhyasana until I'm free from samsara. But the old associations, the old habit, the old tendency, the old limiting thoughts are going to be the obstructing your new vasana, your new thought, your new association. Association with what? With the vision, the Upanishad vision, which is presented to us by the scriptures and by our gurus. So our conception is going to be manifest unless it is still abstract by old limiting associations with inferior or, or, or self-insulting self or self-limiting thoughts. Those associations need to be destroyed or replaced. It is effective only when forceful. In that way, even great things may be achieved. So what is the greatest thing to achieve in life? God, that's a good question for all of us. What is the greatest thing to achieve in life? I want the greatest. Nisargadatta uh, Maharaji would say, it's okay, you, you have a lot of desires. There is no problem with desire. But if you have to leave, move it for desires, have a desire for the supreme, have a desire for the greatest. You remember that, Lin? Have the greatest possible desire. And if you hold that desire with power, it's that desire is going to be effective. And you're going to accomplish this final understanding of your true limitless nature as consciousness. So association, he, he, he brought us back to the point of association, which is the ground, it's the very first step in this process. And here it's being present, not association with people, but association with notions and concepts that live within my mind. Okay, Mark? Okay, we we'll stop here. We come back in a few days, Thursday. I'm gonna send a reminder today, most probably. Anything from you guys? I was remembering that metaphor, or whatever, about the squatters on the land. Do you remember that one? These thoughts, these old ant thoughts about who we are and what the world is, and they're like squatters, and you just have to get them out. <laughs> squatters in the land, who are they? It's not popping in my mind the picture. Oh. This These creature. thoughts. Yeah, These no. thoughts. Yeah, I understood. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I want to know which are those creatures, those animals? Squatters in the land. It's it's like other people that come in, sort of move into your territory. Oh, I can. I, I thought you were you were meaning a picture in my mind. Some animal, some. Uh, some animals. I had the land there in Washington, uh, Olympia, Washington, and there we had some animals that was so difficult to to remove them, and they were, you know, they are making a mess there. And <laughs> I had problems with that kind of creature there. 
yeah. But you talk about people that just come and uh, invade your land and. Uh, yeah, like the thoughts that that well up that, you know, you allow to to carry on. I mean, you continue the thought stream and where you should just check it and say out. Vigilance. Vigilance. As Papaji so, used to say, vigilance to up to the last breath. Right. Okay. Did, do you understand my English, Philip? My broken English? Okay. Yes. Om Puna Mada Puna Midam Puna Puna Muda Chate Puna Tia Puna Madaya Puna Me Babashi Chate Om Shanti 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 Hi Namaste Thank you my friends, we meet again this coming Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. For Thanks, Alanda. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lynn. Namaste. Namaste.